What's your cat's name? Opie. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? You have a dog named Bobby. just in time for Southwest Florida's only magazine program, Florida Close to Home. We're glad to have you along. I'm Amy Tardiff, your host. And I'm Rick McGee, your other host. Today we'll learn about many strange and unexplainable things that have happened right here. And we'll talk to some people who have actually had UFO sightings right here in Southwest Florida. And for a scary adventure full of laughs and fun, we join comedian Chris Cowles on a haunted walk through the Calusa Nature Center in Fort Myers. Well, that sounds like a scream, but first, let's take a trip over to the picturesque island of Sanibel, where a look at the past helps shed some light on the mysterious happenings at the old schoolhouse theater. The schoolhouse theater on Periwinkle Way has all the charm and mystery that comes along with history. The main part of the building is more than 100 years old, and inside the place is full of nooks and crannies, and there are a few who'll tell you they felt, seen, or heard what could be a presence from the past. I was in here alone. I was uh, coloring some sets for the, the show we're in now, and um, there was uh, whistling taking place in this back hallway. It was distinct whistling. I was here alone. It was 9 o'clock at night. There wasn't anybody around, and so I just kind of yelled at him, and he stopped, and he said, you know, I'm not, I know who you are, and you're not bothering me, so I'm going to continue to color. <laughs> and I did. Okay, Philip, I hear you. Thank you. Who is Philip? Is he responsible? A search into the past may provide answers. Originally, the theater was a schoolhouse. It was built around 1894, near the Sanibel Lighthouse. It had a belfry, which blew away in a hurricane. In 1903, the schoolhouse was moved to its present location. Children of all ages came here to learn and play. Eventually, rooms were added to accommodate the students. Six rooms and porches now surround the original school room. The schoolhouse remained active until 1963. One year later, a theatrical couple from New York, Ruth and Philip Hunter, bought the property. Ruth Hunter, an established actress on Broadway, became best known for her performance as Ellie May, the hair lift girl in the play Tobacco Road. In the five years she played the role, she never missed one of the 2,113 performances. Then the Hunters worked together on a radio program. For 15 years, they hosted Let's Go with the Hunters, a popular weekly radio show for New Yorkers. The Hunters would escape to Sanibel Island for vacation. Over the years, they grew to love the island, and with the purchase of the schoolhouse, their retirement dreams came true. In 1965, they moved in, turned the schoolhouse into a community theater, named it the Pirate Playhouse, and two months later, began producing plays. The Playhouse was also the Hunters' home until 1982, when Philip, during a performance on stage, passed away. Eleven years later, in 1993, Ruth joined him. Not empty for long, the Playhouse was back in business in 1984 as a community and professional theater. The Off Beach Players is one of the companies that's been producing plays there ever since. June Koch has been producing community theater since 1984, and she's had her share of strange experiences. There was a red scarf that was constantly missing. It kept showing up in different places. That was our first assumption, that there was some kind of a trickster here and we knew it was of the actors they just weren't <laughs> it just that wasn't happening because it was the one actor who did play the tricks that the tricks were being played on he was the one who needed to wear the red scarf and we couldn't find it and all during and that was like their first you know experience with it and doors doors would slam all the time lights like go lights off. go off yeah I, I, that's Philip. <laughs> Is there something strange going on here? To find out, we invited two sensitives to join June on a tour through the theater and the adjoining home. 
because I was very aware of a little woman coming in and out and back and forth and she wears a long dress and she has her apron scooped up like she has maybe fresh fruit or vegetables and she's preparing a meal or something but she's a, a rather petite lady and she just keeps I just keep seeing her go back and forth and back and forth and she just seemed real busy and very involved in what she was doing mm -hmm. yes um, there is a door that you can't see that we've covered up and I think I believe when I came back here like it was when I opened the theater like 85 there was a staircase was originally there uh -huh. from the school okay. house and, yes okay cause I felt like there might be a kitchen back in that corner the kitchen is actually goes around that way to the kitchen okay well maybe she's coming from it, it right exactly okay. yeah. so that used to be the entrance the front to, to this room to this room yes okay because okay. there's a, a man standing right there He's very tall, tall and thin. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I met him. I and, met him. Um, <laughs> definitely tall. Yeah, he they're real happy too. we're here. Yeah, they <laughs> oh, are they? Okay, yeah, great. He's yeah. welcoming us. Okay. And, um, mm -hmm. At first, he was a little um, apprehensive about the whole thing. And uh, then once he got talking to you, mm -hmm. previously, like days ago, yes. and, and yes. with you, um, then he agreed to it, and he thinks it is good for um, this building. Is there an upstairs? No. No, the, well, there's a little crawl space. I can't say no. There's a very small crawl space. Very small people have partially crawled through there, yes. Did the children used to play up there? Probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Because the dust is falling from them running <laughs> from them around. around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't covered like this. Is no. It? No. No. no, 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 it wasn't. No, that's that's what they, yeah. It was a little lower because you can see all the pipes when, when it was lower than that. Okay. Yeah. The source of the popping sound you've just heard cannot be explained. Listen again to the enhanced sound, and you can also hear what sounds like children playing. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. wasn't covered like this. Is no. It? no, 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 no. 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 Okay, we need to go that way. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The popping um, sound did not return, so our tour continues. Next stop, the home behind the stage. Was there a female that was quite ill that was here for a while? Um, I sensed a, a young woman who had a lot of difficulty. Uh, and I think she was struggling with depression. It was an emotional uh, depression. That I and I feel that uh, daughter, yes. And okay. I feel her in that room back there. She's also one who still makes the noise here. This is the room where the mind is off balance. Now that over there was a hiding place. Okay. That why I don't want to go in there. <laughs> it might be, but that was a hiding place. I don't know if she went in there when she really wanted to recluse. We stopped the tape again to bring your attention back to the sound. Be, this time, listen for low laughter. She went in there when she really wanted to recluse. Okay, like I'm that. also hearing Rose or Rosalie. Was okay. there someone here named Rose? Um, they might have called Ruth Rose. Um, did they grow roses outside? They grow roses outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Around the front. Maybe the roses were a clue. Ruth's sister's name was Rosemary. Is there something here? We're not yeah. sure, but the sensitives definitely feel a positive, welcoming energy. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you that when there are performances going on, there are a lot of uh, there. spirit beings that just fill this yeah. room. Some of them are actors. Now. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> some were actors. Some were uh, people who were friends or guides for people who were performing and involved in the show. And so they come for a lot of different reasons. But they come to really share their energy. And they come, you know, with a loving energy and a, a way of blessing and, and giving good energy. They had no idea that there was a Philip and Ruth Hunter here. We hadn't discussed anything. When they came in and they described him and her to a T, I just thought that was great. That was exciting. But um, my real surprise is that they have found a lot of other people here. 
I was surprised to see that our old costumer was here, though. That amazed me. When they went in the back in the dressing room and the girl saw the man with the mustache, that, that, <laughs> that took me aback, too. We ha I, I especially want to thank them for um, welcoming us in here and letting us um, uh, tell their story because it's really very warm and very beautiful. They were very, very giving people. I don't honestly know if there's anything to people's energies being left in an area once they've departed, but many people at the old schoolhouse say they feel friendly feelings from past residents. Amy, I know you've uh, done a lot of community theater. Have you ever worked at the old schoolhouse? I have worked at the old schoolhouse just this summer, and as a matter of fact, I did feel kind of scared when I walked in there at first. I thought I'd actually get lost in all the back rooms of nooks and crannies, but the, uh, the warmth came over me right away. I knew exactly where I was going. The only thing I did feel was uh, some wafts of cold air running through the dressing room every now and then. Maybe it was that costume designer. Anyway, I'm glad they let me in. 